Carla Meske here with SpiritHealer.com and today I want to share with you a story about Holly, a Jack Russell Terrier who was close to the end of her days. I'm going to give you the excerpts that were really fun, beautiful, and from the heart. Grandmother Sunflower wiggles her finger. Everybody comes here, including the cats. She points to the center of her circle, which is right now looks like a blue to white portal window. When Holly comes to it, her feet go onto the edge of it, and she's very afraid of it because she thinks it's slippery glass. And the first thing we notice about her is that she's all about her toenails and fear of being, of slipping. And she then looks at us and barks. It's no surprise. And she says that she remembers when she could jump up in the air and do pirouettes in the air and land in balance and then do it again. She says she was incredibly athletic. And she dreams about that at night. And she wishes that she could do that again. Grandmother reaches inside Holly and removes a, an intrusion that lies at, it's in the kidney area, but it's specifically the left kidney, and it stinks. Oh, my God, it really reeks. And she puts it into a jar of an antiseptic. Grandmother takes that jar of liquid, and she sends it outward on the boat that my teacher Mac uses. He goes, and he brings it back as an invitation with filigreed edges on the parchmenty paper by the right of the moon rising and the star that follows we call all souls to witness Holly and her transition Holly looks up with eyes that are liquid and non-ordinary And she sees three Jack Russells coming in. One of them is bringing her a red chewy bone. She tells me, please get that red bone out of here. I hate that red bone. And I take it away. Holly, I'm just curious if there's anything regarding that red bone that we should hear from you. What it evokes in you or whatever. Because it's just odd that... The spirits brought it in and you want it gone. I mean, this doesn't happen very often. I'd just like, if you could explain it to us, please. She says that's a very respectful thing. And she's showing me an image of bloody gauzes being laid down on a tray. And it feels like a dental, getting a dental. And I'm getting a strong memory from her of a time when she was having a dental or a surgery of some kind and she was aware of what was going on and she has memory of it with terror associated with that. It's really strong. I go in, I ask her, may I please take this terror out of you and release that from you completely and bring your soul back. And then Grandmother moves in and removes the terror out of her and just lifts it up, and I cut the cord to it in both places. And soul light comes back into Holly to revitalize her after that. And she's bright and cheerful again. And now she's dancing in a circle in her way, reminding us again how she feels athletic in her heart, even though she's limited in her bones. I look to the northwest and there is a a dark small figure coming in that is a raccoon. This has Holly very excited. And the raccoon says, F you to Holly. (laughs) Thanks us all very much for the opportunity to say that to the dog and then leaves. And that revitalizes Holly. That just gets her going, man. She is back to being bright and enthusiastic and ready to go. Oh, whew, I'm back. Holy crap. Some of the stuff that came through, all I don't have any blanks in my connect-the-dot picture anymore. 
there were these questions. There were things that I didn't say about Holly. Um, but the two things that really stuck out were the siblings and the dental thing, the terror. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I just um, have never had an animal ex- talk about a surgery before, like as though they were awake yeah, well, through it. That's, I mean, that's... That's not what it was. When I first got Holly and thought I was the dog whisperer, I took her out on a meet and greet and it went great. And then I went with her to meet and greet the other dog in that household who, and that dog, being much bigger than Holly, got tangled in his owner's legs and Holly got tangled in my legs and that dog took his jaws and took his four canine teeth and inserted one next to each of Holly's eyes and two underneath her chin near her jugular vein. Oh, Jesus. And, and chomped down. Her whole face got bitten. I was like, also, she was the chewing, she was the chewy bone. Um, and I took her to see her mama, and it was a moment I'll never forget, because that was when Dawn showed me how close to her eyes and her jugular vein these puncture marks were. And so Holly was treated for those puncture marks. There weren't any stitches involved, but she was wide awake through the whole thing. Oh, my so God. She just, and the last thing I want to tell you is... <clears throat> Uh, I opened the toy drawer. Holly doesn't play with toys much anymore, but I opened the toy drawer for the cats. And the cats selected one of those long, uh, thin, they almost look like a snake, but they're shaped like an animal. And it is their, I want to say totem. It's not the right use of the word. But they carry the thing around. They put its head in the water dish, and it's a raccoon. Oh, you're kidding. No. No, I'm not. That's why I was laughing. I was, I was trying to be very discreet, but oh. Oh. the raccoon's out, out and, and flirt. I don't know if you heard him, but he came around the corner while you were um, visiting with the spirits and was uh, doing this yell that I now know means he's got the raccoon in his mouth. The raccoon's right out the door. He brought the raccoon in a little bit before you got to that part of the... There were so many other things. The thing you said about Holly's feet... I. Holly is insane about her feet. They feed her about a quarter of a jar of peanut butter every time they trim her nails. And, oh, by the way, in the middle of this session, Holly got up just exactly after the kidney was healed and started dancing around. Great! If you'd like help with yourself or with for an animal friend, I'm at spirithealer.com. Carla Meske, thanks so much.